Hello, hello, everybody. I know Google Class. Wow, can't talk today. Google Classroom has been on a lot of your minds, so I wanted to show you how to utilize it for your business. So as you're creating intellectual property, aka anything that you're creating to help your clients, one of the things that I would recommend is if you do something like coaching and you're creating tools and resources to help them, having a place to combine all that awesome content for future clients can be an over deliver for any of your one-on-one -on -one clients. And it can be something that you can utilize for groups potentially later on or masterminds. Now, when you come to Google Classroom, you will see something that looks like this, but there will be no classes. You are going to have a ton of different um, areas and resources. And what you'll do is you'll click here in the plus button and you'll click create a class. When you click create a class, it said, are you using this with students? Obviously, none of you guys are working with, ch with children. So you say, I've read and I know that children are not going to be utilizing this. From there, you name your class. I would do something like six figure systems. Obviously, you do not need a section name or anything like that. Click here and it's going to create a completely new Google Classroom for you. Now, within the classroom, you can customize the top. You can select a photo from one of these. They also have some that look like this. Other. Otherwise, you can go in and you can go into Canva and you can select Google Classroom templates and you can upload that from your computer. And I think I might have deleted mine, but systems, Google Classroom. Yeah, so you can go in and you can find a classroom um, template, go through there. If you change the color, it will change the color on the left-hand side, which is great. So I'm just keeping it orange, keeping it jazzy. In the classroom stream, this is where you can respond to any of your people. If you click here where it says stream settings, what you can do is you can do the invite codes, you can keep them on, and then use this link to invite people. Another way that you can do that with the class code is if you display this, somebody goes into Google Classroom, types in your special code and they will get in. From there, you can do, students can post and comment. Students can only comment, only teachers can post and comment. I leave it up so students can post and comment, which also includes the teachers. From the classwork on the stream, one of the things that I would recommend is just hiding notifications. What this means is that if anybody posts in the Google Classroom, if you post in the Google Classroom, if you change anything, it'll show everything to everybody and it's just kind of annoying. So I just hide the notifications and then you can show the deleted items. And I think that's annoying also. So I don't do that. If you do not have Zoom and you would like to use Google Meet instead, you can actually choose Google Meet and you can have resources there for your people. I say no overall grade, don't show grades to students. You don't really probably want to do that for your people because they are adults and you're just using this for resources. Now, when you go in, there are different ways that you can organize your content to help serve your people. The first way is by creating topics. You could do intro, something like this, module one, one. You could do something like, not yet, confidence. You could use this as your pillars and you could just have resources. You could do it by modules if you want to do something that is more chronological, like what I do, or you could just have them by pillar. If you want to move them around, you move it around like this and get things going like that. From there, there are lots of different things that you can utilize for your content that you're actually uploading for people. So if you are uploading, let's say, um, I would highly recommend that you just stick with materials. Materials are just resources that your people can use. And you can go in and like for me, I've got an example of all the um the essentials that I have in here. And then I think I changed it to, to, to um, startup systems. If you look here, you can see this is my old welcome module. And what I would recommend is if you have 
when you share the links for presentations, you do just have it as a viewer and then you put slides and then you go here. If you have something like a worksheet that you would like for people to use, like this template for thought work, what I do here is I click share. Anyone with the link can edit. I go to copy link and to ensure that each student gets a forced copy of it, I would click template, click here and within the hyperlink, change this to the word copy. It can't be capitalized, say, capitalized. It has to be all lowercase or else the link won't work. And then you could title it welcome. If you are choosing a topic, you can go here and go into intro. And then you can see here that it shows it for all students. And you see it gets organized here. If you want to move it out of the intro, I think you have to do it within editing it here and move it to something like confidence. Now, let's say you are doing something like progress tracking and you only want certain students to see their um, progress tracker. What you do here is instead of showing it to all of your students, you can change it so it would just be for the student who you're recording things for. Um, if you want to do something like a quiz, you could create a Google form, but it would have to go to all students. You might have points and things like that. And that's why I would just recommend sticking to forced copies of templates and slides and videos, obviously from YouTube or something like that. If you go and you click in assignment, this would go to all students. And what happens is it would look something like this. I did this when I first started. I thought that I was going to have every single person. Um, <laughs> they were all going to fill out their thought work. And you could see what it looks like in here. I did have it by points and stuff like that. And if you click review work as the teacher, you see each person's thought work here, which is just really interesting. And if you click here, you'll see the people who it was assigned to, the people who turned it in. You can give feedback and stuff like that. But it was kind of tricky. And if you wanted to return the work to a student, it was kind of funky. So again, I would just recommend sticking to the simple options there, just doing material and having things like that, sticking to organizing with the, the different topics. You can see people here and add a bunch of students. This is another way you can add people to the group and things like that. And last but not least, if you want to, once you make a classroom and let's say you make something for all of your one-on-one -on -one clients like mine, and this is something I have for my one-on-one -on -one clients, and I don't want to remake it for my mastermind, what you can do if you click the home button, you can click here, copy the whole classroom, and it would create a duplicated version. That's what this one looks like, the one for April. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, happy classrooming, and I'll see you soon.